Hi guys, my name is Sanjay Gupta. I'm a consultant cardiologist in York. Today I wanted to talk uh, about atrial fibrillation and in particular about a device known as the Watchman device. Uh, this video is entitled AFib Strokes and Bleeding Enter the Watchman. Okay, it'll all become very clear very soon. The first thing to understand is that the big risk with atrial fibrillation is the risk of strokes. Uh, patients who have atrial fibrillation who are above the age of 65 who have diabetes or high blood pressure or heart failure or vascular disease or who've had previous strokes are considered to be at a much higher risk of strokes uh, when they develop atrial fibrillation. Um, the risk is uh, largely because in atrial fibrillation they, they, can, they think that there's more stagnation of blood within the heart and <clears throat> um, because the blood is stagnant, the blood can clot, and the clot can then get dislodged, go to the brain, and cause a stroke. And in these patients, it is universally recommended that they are put on anticoagulants, uh, which reduce the clottability of blood, and thereby reduce the risk of clot formation within the heart. Uh, the Whilst anticoagulants lower the stroke risk by about 60%, the big problem with anticoagulants is that because they reduce the clottability of blood, they increase the risk of bleeding. And there are about, of all the patients who have AFib and who need anticoagulants, 6% of patients have a very high risk of bleeding uh, before they start on the anticoagulant. Such patients include patients who have hematological problems. So they already have a problem with their blood, uh, blood and therefore they already have clotting problems anyway. Uh, patients who have had previous life-threatening bleeding, so bleeds in the head, you know, life-threatening bleed elsewhere. Uh, patients who are at very high risk of falling. Uh, and also patients who are very compliant, very uncompliant with medications. So maybe they, they've been prescribed anticoagulants, but uh, you cannot be certain that they will adhere to the regime that they've been given, and there's a risk that they may, by mistake, overdose, etc. So they're, again, a real challenge, because if you don't do anything, you're leaving them at a much higher risk of strokes, and if you do do something, then uh, potentially you could do them harm by prescribing them an anticoagulant. So in those patients, it's a real challenge just to know what to do. And thankfully, we now have a uh, alternative solution in these patients. And this is where the Watchman device comes in. The Watchman device is something that actually offers a, an alternative in such patients. So you don't have to uh, necessarily give them anticoagulants, but you can substantially reduce the risk of stroke. So the uh, first thing to understand is that we know that the most likely site for stagnation and clot formation within the heart is a part of the atria called the left atrial appendage. It's a beak-shaped structure uh, attached to the left atrium. And because it's beak-shaped, there's more stagnation there than anywhere else, and that's where the blood tends to form. And it would be a reasonable assumption then to make that actually if you could in some way uh, stop or exclude this area from the left atrium, block it in some way, then the clot could form, but there's no way the clot can get dislodged. And because the clot can't get dislodged, uh, you don't get the strokes. So if you could mechanically occlude or close off this left atrial appendage, then you have a wonderful solution where you're not exposing the risk, the patient to the risk of uh, anticoagulants, but you're also reducing the risk of strokes. Uh, and this is called, the, and there is such a device which allows you to actually uh, exclude or block off this left atrial appendage and this is called the Watchman device. Okay, and The Watchman device is a self-expandable nitinol cage um, Okay, and basically the way it can be inserted through a keyhole procedure so it doesn't require open heart surgery it can be inserted percutaneously and I'll talk you through how it how we insert it but this is something that uh, exists in five different sizes it's made by a company called Boston Scientific and basically the way you insert it is uh, remember every vein and every artery if you follow it uh, uh, if you continue if you pop a, a wire into a vein and you push the wire up 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 eventually it gets to the heart so what you can do is uh, um, you know, you can feel for a big vein in the groin, give some local anesthetic around it, puncture the vein, 
uh, and then through that uh, puncture you pass a wire and you push the wire under x-ray guidance all the way up to the right heart because the vein will feed into the right heart. Um, over the wire you can uh, insert this coiled up device so it's coiled up so you can just insert it all the way up once you get to the right heart you can actually puncture the uh, the interatrial septum the septum between the right heart the membrane between the right heart and the left heart you can puncture that under x-ray and echo guidance and then you can push the wire through the hole that you've made in the interatrial septum and now you've got the wire going into the left heart into the left atrium so from there what you do is you can push this um, this device over the wire all the way until it gets to the left atrium position it in the left at uh, left atrial appendage and then expand it you can expand it um, in there and deploy it there and it sits there and it blocks the left atrial appendage and then the risk of clots uh, getting dislodged goes away because you've actually blocked it so this is how the watchman device works and this is how we insert it and the one concern with any such device is it's a foreign body at the end of the day so it's it's foreign to the foreign to the the, the you know the patient and therefore there is obviously a small risk that actually if you inject if you put a foreign body could it get infected could it um, could it form clot on it because you know foreign bodies will attract blood and the blood could clot on it what we know is that from studies it has been shown that after about 45 days of this device being within the heart uh, it becomes endothelialized which means that the patient's tissue starts covering it so it no longer appears foreign it no longer exposes there's no foreign surfaces exposed because this endothelialization process where your own kind of skin or tissue grows over this device uh, so that uh, problem uh, is no longer a problem after about 45 days so the next question is okay well it's wonderful the the idea is wonderful you can do it are there any studies that have been shown that it actually works does it do what it is expected to do does it actually reduce strokes and there have been two studies um, uh, which were randomized studies the first was something called the protect AF study uh, and I'll try and leave a link on my Facebook page for this study uh, but they found they took um, 707 patients and they randomized them to either warfarin or uh, this device and what they found was actually uh, what they did then is once the device was put in they left these patients the patients who were randomized to the device were still given warfarin for 45 days to try and cover that period where this um, foreign body could still be an attractant to blood forming so they gave the patient 40 45 days of warfarin after in, after putting the device in but after 45 days they switched them to um, aspirin and another uh, antiplatelet agent called clopidogrel for six months and then after six months these patients just remained on aspirin lifelong and what they found was that in these patients the watchman device was no worse than warfarin so it was a non-inferiority study it was designed to look to make sure that the new device the watchman device was no worse than warfarin and that is what it confirmed it was really interesting that at three you know when they followed these patients up at about 3.8 years uh, more people in the warfarin group had suffered bleeds compared to the watchman device so in some ways um, the study showed that the watchman device was as good as warfarin and if you counted the number of bleeding episodes on these patients over a period of years uh, there were less bleeding episodes in those people who were who had the watchman device which is really good because that's why it was being put in it was being put in to reduce the risk of strokes and it was put in to try and reduce the risk of bleeding and there was another study called the prevail study p-r-e-v-a-i-l and in the prevail study they took um 407 patients and again in this study they found that the watchman device was no worse than warfarin and good warfarin control uh, so it showed that actually this idea that the uh, area where the clot forms is in the appendage is correct it shows that if you can mechanically occlude the appendage uh, it is as good as anticoagulating the patient one of the problems with these two studies is that again patients still had to take warfarin for about six weeks you know 45 days after the device was implanted 
uh, but there is a significant proportion of patients who can't take anticoagulants at all okay and in those people you still have a challenge because you say well you know it's fine but the reason I'm doing it is because I'm worried about giving this patient an anticoagulant it doesn't make sense that I put the device and give them the anticoagulant for a six-week period after that what if they bled from the anticoagulant in those six weeks so what we really wanted was the solution we really wanted was something which would not need anticoagulation at all uh, so there was another study called ASAP, A-S-A-P, and in this study, this was a non-randomized study, they took 150 patients who had absolute contraindications to warfarin, so they couldn't have anticoagulants, and what they did was they gave these patients a watchman device, and they just gave them six months of two antiplatelet agents, aspirin and something called clopidogrel or ticlopidine, um, and then after six months, they switched them to a single antiplatelet agent, aspirin, and they found that in these patients, uh, they had much less uh, uh, strokes and systemic blood clots compared to those patients who would ordinarily just be taking aspirin or clopidogrel. So you remember these patients couldn't take warfarin anyway, so you can't compare them with patients who are on warfarin. Your alternatives are either leave them on aspirin or you put this watchman device. And actually, if you put the watchman device in and give them aspirin and clopidogrel for six months and then just aspirin, then these people had a lower risk of strokes compared to a, a group of patients who don't have the watchman and just, just left on aspirin. So that was encouraging. And then there's a final study, which was called the evolution study, which is a real world study. So these are all, you know, studies which are now looking at bigger numbers of patients to see what actually happens in the real world. And what they've found is that actually in over a thousand patients with a very high stroke risk, um, who are, and 60% 60, 60 of those patients were considered unsuitable for anticoagulants. Uh, they had the watchman device and in those patients the stroke risk uh, fell by about 84 percent compared to historical estimates so in essence the watchman device offers a wonderful innovative and very effective solution uh, for patients who have a very high risk of bleeding but also have a high risk of stroke the only problem with the watchman device is the cost and uh, you know until recently um uh, a lot of centers weren't being funded, but now I think the NHS have agreed and they've said that in the very high risk cases, they would fund uh, the watchman device. And I think in the coming year, they're planning to put in about a thousand such devices in the in, in the UK. So um, I think this is something just to be aware of. And if you have a relative or if you're someone who uh, can't take anticoagulants and therefore is worried about the high risk of stroke but can't take anticoagulants because of the risk of bleeding it is well worth your while going and speaking to your doctor or a cardiologist about whether you would be suitable for the watchman device particularly now uh, because uh, some centers are, have received funding for this device so um, yeah, in my center you know my local center is Leeds and Leeds are certainly beginning to do some so this is, um, I hope you found this useful. I would love to hear what you have to say about the Watchman device and the video. And um, I, again, once again, thank you so much, so, so much for everything you do for me. I am very, very appreciative. If you get a chance, um, do visit my website, which is drsanjayguptacardiologist.com. I've started putting a lot of stuff on there. So if you get a chance to watch that. And also, I'd be so grateful um, if, if you find that this video is useful. Uh, if you'd consider sharing it, I'd be most grateful. Thank you so much. All the best. Take care. Bye.